hello students today we will study about another kind of simple machine that is the wheel and axle wheel has been the greatest invention of man okay from the primitive time when man started becoming civilized the first invention that man had done was the invention of wheel and at that time wheel was employed in the carts okay to carry things from one place to another or even uh, people from one place to another later on first uh, these carts used to be pulled by themselves human beings used to pull by themselves and then later on they employed animals okay so the greatest invention that the man has made is the invention of wheel so this is how a normal wheel looks like this is the wheel Now the wheel has to have a, a support on which it turns. All right. Now later on I am going to post another video from YouTube. You please watch that also. Okay, in that it is well explained over there how the wheel gets support and what do we call that object which gives support? What do we call this object which gives support to the wheel? The object is the axle. The whole wheel. is fixed on this axle all right the whole wheel it may be made up of wood it may be made up of metal in the center there is a hole in the wheel through which a rod type of object is inserted now this rod when it goes inside this hole it the hole should be right in the middle okay of the wheel now this serves as the support and this support is called the axle okay it's called the axle now there may be many instances where when you uh, turn the axle the wheel also will rotate along with it or um, in this case you give force on the axle and you rotate the wheel okay like you have those wheels for doing exercise okay on the ground you use there's a wheel there the axle you hold it with two hands and then you roll it on the ground so you are actually holding the two ends of the axle and applying the effort the force on the axle and when you're doing so the wheel rotates all right now here also there is an example given the two sets of wheels are there and one axle holds these two wheels so this is the axle and these two are the wheels So when you give uh, force on the axle, or actually when you rotate the axle by giving force, then this force given on the axle rotates the wheel. So axle can rotate the wheel. Another such example I have given over here is the steering wheel. In the car, you have steering wheel. So this is how the steering wheel looks like. This is the wheel. And here is the axle. Now here, actually, what you are doing is you are turning the wheel. When you are turning the wheel, the axle moves. It moves this way, or it moves this way. When you rotate the wheel. So in this case, the wheel is turning the axle. so it depends upon you what kind of arrangement the wheel and axle is and where it is employed depending on that the axle will rotate the wheel or the wheel will rotate the axle all right so the combination of these two wheel and axle system is known as wheel and axle okay one such application of wheel and axle is the pulley okay which is our next topic Okay, the next one that we have is pulley, and just few moments back I have told you that pulley is an example of wheel and axle. Okay, so you can see by the diagram itself, this diagram and the previous diagram that I have drawn is this one, wheel and axle represents the same thing.
So that's what is given in your book also. If you see in your book, page number 44. Here it is. What does it say? A pulley is similar to wheel and axle. A pulley is a wheel with a grooved rim in the center. Now what this grooved rim is, that we need to know. A wheel with a depression inside. Depression? In Hindi we say gattha. Okay. That depression is for the rope to go inside. You must recall that um, in a well, Kua, you must have uh, seen at least in pictures where the women of the village they go to a well to draw water. Now in the well, they have this arrangement. I have over here given the representation of the pay multi tied to a rope. The rope goes around this wheel. Now to hold the rope in the wheel so that the rope does not slide out of the wheel, there is a small depression given made in the wheel itself to hold the rope. I hope you understand that depression in the wheel is called groove. Okay. So since this groove, gatha, depression, whatever you call it, is given in the wheel, so like this arrangement is called as a grooved wheel. Okay, the wheel is grooved, G R O O V E D. So that groovedness in the wheel holds the rope in place so that the rope doesn't slide off the rope, slide off the wheel. Alright? So just like wheel and axle, here also there is an axle. This axle is actually like a full drum. You must have studied in the topic level. Fulcrum gives support to the whole simple machine. Now you can see this fulcrum is attached to a support, fixed support. The fixed support is attached over here to the fulcrum. So the whole wheel is actually moving around the fulcrum. Alright. So in this case the axle turns the wheel. So this is an example of a fixed pulley. Fixed pulley where the pulley is fixed to a fixed support. Another example is combination of a fixed and a movable pulley. The top one over here shows a fixed pulley since it is fixed to a support. Whereas this fixed pulley is attached to another pulley which is not fixed anywhere. It is free to move. That is, if I give force downward, this pulley which is attached to the fixed pulley will also move along with the load. The load and the pulley together will move upwards. So in that case, this is a movable pulley. This is a fixed pulley. And combination of both are, is known as combination of fixed and movable pulley. Now what is the significance of using more than one pulley? Keep in mind, the more the number of pulleys that we use, the pulleys actually what they do? They, okay, coming to this one only, what does this pulley, the significance of this pulley, what is the significance, why do we use it? First of all, pulleys are used to change the direction of force. Okay, I am using force downward, which is able to lift this bucket upward. So force given downward, lifting a bucket upwards. This is one significance, changing the direction of force. Second, suppose the weight of this um, pulley, I mean sorry, the weight of this load is say 10 kg. When I am using this pulley, I am actually giving half the force to lift it. So I have to give only 5 kg force. So that's what is the second significance. It reduces the amount of effort, that is force, to lift a particular load. So two significance, one is changing direction, one is the amount of effort that we need to lift the load is lesser than the load. So, um, more the number of pulleys we use, the load is, the 
load is actually equally distributed among the two. So the amount of force will be even lesser. To lift this particular load, the amount of force will be lesser. More the number of combination of pulleys and rubber pulleys, more the number of pulleys there in will actually reduce our effort because the load is evenly distributed among the pulleys. More pulleys, more distribution of weight. And more distribution of weight means you will have to apply less force or less effort to lift to lift the load. That is the reason in cranes, you know what are cranes? Cranes are used to lift heavy loads. In the cranes, if you have ever seen inside a crane, there are multiple number of pulleys there. I would suggest you to go to YouTube if you can and see working of a crane. There you will see multiple number of cranes, sorry, pulleys are used in a crane. So more the number of wheels, the load is evenly distributed among the wheels. So the amount of effort required to lift that load will be very very less compared to the actual 